Hello there and welcome. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, chapter one in Introduction to Economics one. Um, the economics is about choice. Uh, all the life is a bunch of choices and uh, economics is about finding ways to make our choices so that uh, our utility or profit is maximum. Uh, the utility is for households or individuals and uh, profits uh, are for firms. Mm, the reason uh, for choice uh, is simply scarcity. What uh, scarcity arises from is uh, we humans uh, have unlimited uh, needs and desires, uh, but on the other hand, nature uh, gives us limited resources and that conflict is the main reason uh, for the concept of scarcity. One of the uh, main concepts in economics is the opportunity cost. Uh, the opportunity cost is one of the most important concepts uh, so we should uh, understand it very well. Uh, we can describe it like this. Uh, we have some options when we make choices. So among many options, we obviously uh, choose the best according to us. Uh, but by choosing the best option uh, among the other options, uh, we give up the other options. Uh, the opportunity cost is the second best choice that we didn't choose. Uh, it is important for us uh, to know uh, that we give up that second best choice in order to choose our best option. We just can't have the best both choices. Another um, important concept in economics is the production possibilities frontier. Having limited options means that we can produce a limited product. This can be illustrated using production possibilities frontier. A, B, C, and D are the production options for a firm that produces only two products. All of those points are possible for the firm. The point F is also possible for the firm, uh, but it is not optimal. This means that at that point, the firm's resources are not fully employed in the production process. The point of G is not a possible combination for the firm because it exceeds the capacity of the firm. This means that no matter what the firm does, it can't produce that amount of both products. But in time, a firm may increase its capacity. So let's take a look that, about that. An increase in a firm's production capacity can be shown uh, as in these graphics. An increase in capacity shifts the production possibilities frontier to the right up. This means a higher production capacity for at least one of the goods. This illustration shows a capacity increase in both of the goods that firm produces. Another important concept in economics is efficiency. Efficiency means using limited resources to get the maximum level of output. In an efficient market, the limited resources are utilized at maximum performance. One of the most important uh, concepts, again, in economics is marginality. Marginality resembles small incremental changes. Incremental changes are used in economics to bring consumers and producers into equilibrium. Without the concept of marginal, it's not possible to optimize the actor's decisions. Markets are of the highest importance in modern economic theory. Markets are the places where interactions between firms and households happen. Those interactions are the main source of resource allocation, which is the main problem in economics. In markets, actors of the economy optimize the resource allocation using their costs and benefits. 
Price is the most important part of a market. Because the markets are the places where the resources allocation uh, allocates or the allocation happens, a failure in them causes an economy to work inefficiently. A failure in markets causes an inefficient, non-optimal resource allocation. Some types of market failures include lack of knowledge, externalities and interventions. Externalities are also an important concept. The term externality stands for an unintended impact of an economic actor's behavior on another actor. Think of an hotel of which guests later they rest wastes on the beach and you see the pollution and you get angry. Externalities may be good things also. Think of a new factory in an industrial area. If the investors are to illuminate the place, all other factories around that area benefits from this. That is a positive externality. Macroeconomics is the economics of the individuals. Macroeconomics is interested in individuals' behavior in economy. These individuals consist of households and firms. And on the other hand, macroeconomics is the economics of the whole agents. Macroeconomics is interested in behaviors and decisions of the whole economies of countries or regions and even the world. Modern economics relies on three steps. These are observation, theory building and test. At first step, a researcher observes the world. Then at the second step, a theory is built using the observations. The last step is the testing of that theory using data gathered from the field. Lastly, for economics, statements are important values. We can separate statements into two types, positive and normative. Positive statements are about how things actually work, whereas normative statements are about how things should be. For example, the statement, an increase in money supply causes inflation, is a positive statement. And the statement, all the young people should be employed in the economic system, is a normative one. Thanks for watching.